Hey, what's going on? So we're going to talk about revolutions today. And do I mean revolution as in like an uprising? No, let me show you what I'm talking about. Really what they are, the combination of two different types of math. They're the combination of geometry and speed problems. If you have a question about either of these, you should check back in my previous videos where I do some examples. Uh, and the way that revolution problems look is like this. This is how they'll show up on the SHSAT. So it could look a little bit intimidating, but this is actually a pretty easy problem if you know how to, to break it down step by step. So first let me explain to you how we can get from the tire size to the speed. Check it out. So this is how the circumference is affecting the distance with the rotations. So if there's like a thin layer of dirt or paint or whatever on the edge of this tire, that would also be the same as the circumference. And as this tire turns, it moves forward and the dirt starts to speck off of the tire. So halfway through a rotation, notice that a lot of it is left. And by one full rotation, the entire length of the circumference is the distance that the wheel traveled. So another way to say circumference in these problems is the distance of one rotation, right? So if the circumference is seven, after one rotation, it has traveled seven. And this is the concept that we're gonna use to be able to go from rotations or revolutions per minute to distance and then speed. So let's go back to the problem that I showed on the previous page and let's rock it out. I'm just gonna do the bullet points because I, I don't wanna write it again. The first thing we're gonna have to do is figure out the circumference of this tire. So if you don't remember, the circumference is the same thing as two pi r, or the circumference could be uh, pi times the diameter. And for these problems, generally the SHSAT wants you to use a 22 over seven value for pi. Uh, and that's because you don't have a calculator and they just want you to be able to work it out via fraction. So let's find out how far this tire travels or how far the car travels after one revolution of the, the wheel. So let's find the circumference. So we know that the circumference is two times pi times r, which in this case is one, so that the circumference is two times pi. And we know that uh, pi is 22 over seven. So the circumference is 44 over seven, and that's in feet. So that means that every rotation of the tire, we're traveling 44 divided by seven feet, AKA every revolution of the tire, we're traveling six feet and you know a couple inches or whatever. So now we need to figure out how many of these revolutions we need to make in order to travel this 88 feet, and we gotta do it in a minute, right? So another way to think of this is how many times does this go into 88? And if you're not familiar with how to divide a fraction, you can flip the fraction and multiply. Now we're here. So let's do a little bit of math and let's see if we can simplify this. Bang. 14 revolutions. And it needs to make 14 revolutions in one minute to go 88 feet a minute. That's how we can figure out these problems. Just finding the circumference and then finding out how many of that circumference fit inside of our speed. And once we do all the math and make sure that we checked it and make sure it's all right, we, that's our answer. Cool, so let's do another one just so you can see where the numbers aren't as, you know, as straightforward. Okay, bang, 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 great. So let's first find what the circumference of this is because we know the radius is 3.5. The circumference is two pi r. The circumference will be two times pi times 3.5. That's gonna equal seven pi. And we're gonna use that 22 over seven figure for pi. 
So the circumference is going to be 7 times 22 over 7. And those 7s cross out, so the circumference is 22 feet. Okay, this is a big tire, right? So how many times does this tire need to rotate to cover that 110 feet? Well, we know that it needs to go 110 feet. And how many times does that 22 fit into it? Uh, five revolutions per minute. Cool, that's our answer. Let's do one that's a little bit harder than this. Here is a harder version of these problems. A car is traveling at a speed of 132 feet a minute. If the tire is making three revolutions per minute, how big is the tire's radius? Uh, if you're feeling good about it, pause it and give it a shot. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys through how to do this. So we know that is going 132 feet every minute. And to do that, it needs to make three revolutions. So I wanna know how big or how much distance this wheel covers for one revolution. So I'm gonna divide it by three, 44. So it is making every time it revolves, every time the tire revolves, that car is moving forward 44 feet. And it does that three times every minute to get to the 132 figure. So if every time it rotates, it goes 44 feet, that means the circumference is 44 feet. So how do we get to circumference from radius? Well, I'm a huge fan of writing out the formula first, two pi r, and then plugging in what we know. So since we know that the circumference is 44 feet, we can plug that in for our c, right? And now we just need to solve for r, we just need to solve for the radius. So I'm gonna divide both sides by two, divide both sides by two, so I get 11 equals, oh no, that's not right, I get 22, 22 equals pi times the radius. Now we know that pi is that value of uh, 22 over seven, R right there. So what we can do is multiply both sides by 7, by 7, and I don't know what 22 times 7 is. 154 equals 22 R because this 7 and this 7 cancel out. So now we need to find how many times 22 goes into 154. Bang. So our R is 7. That means that our radius is seven feet long. Cool? So this is how you do revolution problems. Oh, so you can see it. This is how you do revolution problems. Um, so keep practicing on these because they were on the SHSAT uh, practice booklet. So it's fair game for the test for them to do these. Uh, and you can go forward from the radius to the speed and find the revolutions, or you can go backwards with having the speed in revolutions and then finding the size of the tire. Either way, just keep in mind that you're gonna be finding the circumference and that the circumference equals the distance that the tire travels every revolution. All right, well, if you have any questions about these, leave a comment below, like, and subscribe, tell all of your homies about this channel. And I will be live streaming on Thursdays at 6 p. So if you have any questions, I'll see you there.